guys, we're doing another description today, another layout on a build for you. This time, it is Vala, the ranged assassin from the Diablo universe. That's right, the demon hunter. She's here, and she is slaying it up, man. She is uh, quite quite the hero. Checking her out here. Uh, can read the backstory. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the skins, and then we want to jump into the try mode to show her off, talk about her abilities, talk about the build. This is a pretty cool skin. Right here, the Vampire Slayer, pretty awesome. All these different tints. And then, of course, the Angelic Vala as well. These are both bought and paid for skins. Uh, very nice tints. I love that tint. Um, well, let's give this one a shot and try it off. And, of course, this was the Master Skin. So once you get the hero to level 10, it's 10,000 gold to buy her. And then, uh, yeah, so we'll go into try mode, talk about her abilities, talk about Vala a little bit. The first thing you got to notice with Vala... She's a ranged assassin, right? But she's got one of the lowest health pools in the game, 700 base hit points at level 1. It scales up to 2,790 at level 20. What does this mean? Uh, you know, if we're in here, we go actually and rank them. She is at the lowest with Nova, above Abathur, Murky, and Tyrand. So Tyrand is the squishiest at 635. So Vala's, you know, a bit above there, but Tyrand gets more per level. So at level 20, you're actually squishier by 60 hit points. Uh, of course, you're far above an Abathur and a Murky, more than double their hit points at level 20, but um, just remember you're sub 3,000 there and you're 700 to start. Um, now, you can check her out here. She's really, really awesome looking. You know, we will run around uh, and then even do like a little dance animation. And talking about uh, health regen is gonna be low. Men is the same across all heroes, so no differences there. Uh, now, if we do look at damage to start, her base damage is pretty low. It's 28 per auto attack, but she's got a very fast attack speed. Uh, and it's going to scale up at 9 per level, so you'll be at 199 at level 20. Um, now, that is still on the low end of things. You've got, you know, of course, uh, well, I mean, it's, it's this top half. But, you know, Azeratul, by comparison, would have 294 damage at level 20. So she's at 199. Uh, it's, it's fairly low. And if we take a look actually at the character select screen here, and you can see her attacks per second, 1.67. She attacks like a boss. And, uh, you know, it's really the strength. She also, ha well, let's talk about her trait now. We haven't talked about that. That actually kind of factors into this. Her trait is hatred. Basic attacks grant a stack of hatred. You can have 10 of these at once, so they scale up over time, each attack giving you one. Each hatred stack increases basic attack damage by 2% and move speed by 1%. So she gets faster, up to 10% faster, and she'll get she'll hit harder, up to 20%. Okay, so you take, we'll round up to 200 on level 20, right? From 199, we'll round up to 200. 200, 20% of that, what's 10% is 20, right? So that's 40, 240, that's extra damage per attack. And she's still attacking insanely, insanely fast. If we, um, just to give you an idea of this, we're going to roll out here into the middle of the lane against the minions and just show you this trait in in action. A little bit of a delay there in the try mode, interesting enough. Hmm. All right. So you can see the stacks. They're up at 10 now. And this is kind of the cooldown where if you're not attacking, you'll lose one. You can see how it went down to 9. and But then I'm attacking again, and they're going right back up. And this is... she's That damage adds up. Look at how fast Arthas is going down here. Okay, and that's even without using an ability. So let's talk about those abilities. As she taunts us. Okay, so Q is a skill shot in a sense. It's a hungering arrow. Cooldown of 14 seconds and mana cost of 60. It fires an arrow that deals 81 damage. We're at level 1, 81 damage to the first target hit. And then seeks up to two additional enemies, dealing 40 damage. You can hit multi in a same enemy multiple times. So you can get three hits out of this. It's just the second two do half damage. Uh, now that's going to be, at level 20, it's going to be 366 damage on the first target, 183 on the second two. So if you hit one enemy three times, or you hit, uh, you know, three different enemies, you're doing over 700 damage. You know, it's um, 732 damage if you land all, you know, if you land the skill shot. Now it does fire in a line like this, uh, but you don't have to, like, it has to be within, like, range of the enemy. It doesn't have to be spot on hitting them. It's it's kind of not like the hardest skill shot to hit, and we'll show it off in a second. We'll, we'll show them all off together. Um, w is a cone shot like this, like a skill shot right here. It's called multi-shot. 
cooldown shorter at 80 i mean 8 8, eight seconds the mana cost is the same at 60 and it deals about the same damage 75 at level one so a little bit less and then 360 at level 20 so it's six less damage than the uh, the cube and it only hits one target like only hits once i should say but it can hit multiple targets in this range so you could hit an entire minion wave you can hit an entire team if they're that closely stacked i mean that's pretty close but you could hit two three heroes possibly potentially with this and minions and mercs all together and each one of those targets in this range, in this rate, like the little area, the cone area, is going to take that 360 damage at level 20. So uh, you have a potential for a, the damage to start adding up. E is a vault, as you can see. Short dash in whichever way you want to go. It can get you through stuns. You can dash through things uh, with this. It is pretty short in range, though, and you have to you know, just be aware. You don't get any shields with it. It's a uh, more a little bit more on the mana side 75 versus 60 for the other skill the other shots the other abilities and uh, a cooldown in the middle of 10 seconds okay so that's that let's talk about the heroics and what we're going to do is we're going to level up to 10 here and we're going to talk about one heroic and show it off uh we'll talk about there's two of them so right now now this build i should say there's multiple different ways we're going to talk about the talents in a minute there's multiple different ways to build avala uh there's really she has a good variety in her builds this is going to be the multi-shot build i didn't really say that it'll be in the title of course but the multi-shot build um gives her a bit more range and a bit more in that she can you know she can poke she can catch easier she can chase down people um and it's still good damage. It's a really cool build. It's the build that's used most by the pro, the uh, you know top competitive teams right now. Uh, so it's highly regarded. There's also an auto attack build, which is more like single target DPS. You kind of lose a little bit out with this build. And then there's the the arrow build, which is a little bit more. Just, you can do like build your your character to be a little bit more self sustaining in lane. She gets like health, like vampiric assault and things like that. So this is just the the straight up multi shot build. Nothing special here. Uh, we'll talk about Reign of Vengeance first. There's two heroics here. Reign of Vengeance has the longer cooldown of 90 seconds. You can see 60 seconds for strafe. And the mana cost is actually going to be larger. It's 100 for rain and only 80 for a strafe. So let's go ahead and select Reign of Vengeance. You can see it's it's a, uh, a skill shot in the sense that you have to place it down on the map like this. We'll place it down and you can see one and then two. Each of those little waves is a wave of shadow beasts as it says here. You'll launch two waves and they deal 330 each to enemies within that area and it stuns for 0.5 seconds now this is 330 at level 10 so at level 20 each wave will do 560 the advantage to this heroic is that you i cast it as you saw and i can do it again once i've cast it i can move away it is down it is out <clears throat> it's good to go it cannot be interrupted uh, the other heroic as we'll show you is channeled it's a strafe and it does damage in a large arc, but it does it can do potentially more damage in good hands. It has more range, you can move and shoot with it. And a very good, very good, but the problem with the strafe is that it can be interrupted because it is a channeled ability that lasts for four seconds, as you'll see. Four seconds. So uh, that's the rain. You'll see this sometimes, maybe if they have a dive comp and you need to stun them, or you can land a wombo on top of like a Zer to avoid prison or an Uther Divine Storm. You know, this can be very useful. Uh, now uh, I've also seen it used like with the Gazlo wombo combo with the um, the grab bomb to, to great effect. Now that's the benefit of the rain, right? It cannot be interrupted. It gets that little bit of stun in there. It's good against people who are in your face or going to interrupt your strafe. But more often than not with this build, you're going to see strafe taken just to get a little bit more range, a little bit more versatility, and a little bit more damage if it's executed well. And it's a shorter cooldown and shorter mana cost. So keep all of that in mind. And let's go ahead and reset the levels. And now we'll talk about the talents, and we get to level 10, we'll talk about strafe a little bit more. Uh, it is a multi-shot build, so we're going to basically be favoring the W, building that up with a couple, you know, niche picks here on, you know, a couple of the levels. But level 1 increases the range, so we'll stand outside of the gate here. That's the range, you can see how it just tip touches the flower there, kind of. If I take the up range upgrade, it's now all the way over here. So it went from, like, where the cursor is now like where the edge of the green on the cursor is to the full extent you get that much more range um you can poke like if you're trying to delay someone from channeling a tribute you can hit from farther away or a dragon knight if you want to get a whole minion wave it's a little bit easier you can engage in team fights from farther away 
and you can potentially catch more heroes, more minions, more mercenaries in that extended area. Level 4 is going to be another W upgrade, the arsenal. Now with this, you'll fire 3 grenades, which deal 65 damage each, in addition to the traditional multi-shot. And this is the multi-shot if you want to actually see what it looks like, just without the arsenal. You can see it, and it would do damage with all of those darts. Now if we take arsenal, clear the cooldown, and you're going to see grenades coming out. One, two, three. So there are your grenades. That just adds to the damage of this. So you can see there's 65 damage if I level up. It goes up to 72. So that's 7 damage, plus 7 damage per level. Going up to level 7, we saw this before. I took battle momentum. Basic attacks reduce ability cooldowns by 0.5 seconds. This is a really awesome trait because it not only works on your basic abilities, it'll also work on the cooldown timer for your heroic. And we're going to be picking strafe more often than not. So the cooldown is going to go from 60 seconds to, depending on how much you're attacking, I mean, it could go down to potentially 40 seconds. You know, if you're, you're I mean, it could, you could really, I probably, technically, if you're attacking the whole time, you might be able to cut it in half. Um, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't bet on that. I'd say you could take, you probably take 10 to 20 seconds off of it most times, which means your heroics up every 50 seconds, uh, 40 to 50 seconds, which is amazing. Uh, now it doesn't add any cool effects. It's just the idea is that when you attack minions, your cooldowns are going to be, uh, you know, reduced in duration. And this is a, a talent you'll see on multiple heroes. So here's the cooldown. Now I'm attacking, and just watch the cooldown go down fast. It's going faster than it nor would normally. So you can get more of your abilities off in a game with that, and including your heroic. So we level up. Let's show off the strafe. This is what it looks like without anybody in range. You can see the range. Now it lasted for four seconds. You can be interrupted. Uh, it rapidly attacked visible enemies, visible enemies, for 82 damage per hit, prioritizing heroes over minions. You can move and use vault. You can use your E while using the heroic. This is going to scale up to 150 damage per hit at level 20. 13 is going to be another W upgrade. So for us shot, this will add a slow to your W. Remember, you've already increased the range, you've increased the damage, now you get a 40% slow for two seconds. That's a big deal, especially in team fights. Catching heroes with this is huge. So we'll show that off in a second. We'll go up to level 16. This is going to be a more of a survivability talent here. The Blood for Blood, a generic talent available on multiple heroes. You activate, you steal 15% of a target enemy's max health and slow its movement speed by 30%. So you get the slow of 30% for three seconds. You, combined with your multi-shot, that's another 40% for two seconds. You can slow people for tons of time. You hit them with the multi-shot, then you hit them with the blood for blood two seconds later, and then you hit them with the multi-shot again. You know, because of your basic ability, your your battle momentum, reducing cooldowns, you can basically keep them slowed for, um, what is that? It's, it's four plus three, seven seconds. That's, that's a long time. Um, and so that's a, tar a triggered ability, I should say. It's on the one. You'll tap one, and you can see that I would click on somebody inside of this circle, inside of that range. Leveling up to level 20, before we show these off again against the uh, actual minions here. Going to take another generic talent, Bolt of the Storm, and this helps add to survivability as well. Just late game, you know, you don't have Resurgence on Avala, of course. So you activate another activated ability, and it's a teleport, just like that. And combined with the Vault, it can save your bacon. Or... You could, if you want to be reckless, vault into the enemy team and then pop off a strafe. If they have no way to interrupt you, why not, right? Okay, so, clear the cooldowns, toggle the minions, and here they come. We're going to show everything off here. Watch for it closely. We're going to kill this Arthas. He's not going to see whatever hit him, right? We'll just wait down here. Oh, there he is. Okay, we go in, throw the arrow out. We're going to throw that down on him to slow him. You can see his health going down. And then I'm going to pop in here. Vault in with the strafe, able to get the kill quite easily, and then we can go to work on these towers. Now you can see the range on this. I could actually like come out a little bit and then hit everything, three grenades, and the full range there. Now you have to be careful with the cooldowns down, but of course we're going to be able to push this back pretty quickly. And you'll be able to watch the heroic timer going down as I'm attacking. This is going to go down pretty quickly. And you can see how we slowed there, able to get the kill again, just that slow. Slowed him down just enough to get a kill. 
And uh, it's good for it's traditional or typical, I should say, for a good Vala to lead games in siege and hero damage a lot of the time. A lot of things can play into that. You could see how the arrow hit here and it hit multiple minions. Um, but she's generally going to be at the top of the damage charts if played correctly. And don't be afraid to use your strafes to pick off a single hero. You can be aggressive with her at the right time. I had the W up. I didn't even need to use that there. Uh, now, things you have to watch out for are the interrupts on the strafe, like the Uther stun. If you're too close, don't be too close to an Uther. He shouldn't be able to stun you that easily. Material with Judgment can usually catch you, so you kind of want to wait for him to Judgment and then use the strafe. Boom. So you can see how it hits, even if it's not spot on. If you don't place it correctly all the time, you can still usually get a hit with it. It's not the hardest skill shot in the game to hit. It's pretty easy, actually. Um, and you can attack walls to reduce cooldowns even further. Remember, it's just basic attacks. You don't have to be hitting a hero or a minion with them. So yeah, uh, the Uther stun, just good positioning. Stay high and dry, as I call it. If this is my tank, I want to kind of be this side of him. Now, now I could go ahead and engage on the fort, right? But in a team fight, if I'm behind my tank, it's going to be hard for somebody to stun me as long as I stay back here. So, you know, just good positioning will keep you alive. And it's going to allow you to get the full use, the full duration out of your strafe. Now, Arthas doesn't have any, any way to, to stop me. He can root me, but I can dodge that pretty easily with the vault and with the blink. You should be able to dodge a root to keep the strafe going. And you can see just she does a ton of damage. I mean, I'm already up here just playing around a little bit. Um, so we'll go ahead and check her out in an actual game setting. She is a lot of fun to use. She's only 2,000 gold. She's got some cool skins. I definitely recommend her for anyone, even if you're brand new to Heroes and the MOBA. Uh, just, just be careful. Be, have good positioning. Don't be too aggressive. She's squishy, and she can be interrupted. And if she's focused, she'll she'll fold like paper mache. You know, she'll just crumble rather. Um, so do be careful. Have good positioning. But she's a lot of fun to use. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. And uh, it's gonna do it for this part of the uh, the Vala tutorial here.